Hey everybody, it's Pilate. Welcome back to Age of Wonders 4 Let's Play featuring the God King Gurgle of the Growth. The first order of business today is to pick a brand new tome, and after a fair bit of deliberation, and after looking through the comments of the previous episode's comment section, it seems as though we've ended up with the Tome of Fertility. This actually makes perfect sense for how we've been growing our faction. It gives us access to some excellent structures, to some very interesting units, and to some very interesting battlefield abilities from some of these units as well. For example, Seduce, which is a quite literal form of subjugation in the game through mind control. So it's very much on brand, it's very much on theme, so the Tome of Fertility is very much our next tome. Life, I would say, always finds a way. seeds of growth and healing throughout their lands. Now, I quite like how often growth is mentioned in that passage, and I also quite like our opening hand over here. Now, of the lot, Restore the Land is probably the weakest of the spells available to us, particularly because of how lush this realm already is, but Blossom of Life is a very powerful spell. Friendly units in a 2 hex radius gain 3 stacks of regeneration. That's no joke. And then we also have access to Summon Nymph here again. That's the unit with the Seduce ability. They also have the Revitalize ability, and they have a slightly more powerful version of the Poison Blast that some of our other units already have access to. So, I think we're going to go ahead and secure the summoning of nymphs because this session things are going to get violent. We are most likely in a handful of turns going to lose quite a few units. And to that end, I also want to start recruiting some wild speakers at Spore Pit and at Thorn both because these guys have Poison Blast as well, albeit a slightly weaker version, I suppose. But they also have Conjure Animal, which can really come in handy in the middle of a battle when you need just that extra support. So two wild speakers en route, and at Thorn we'll go ahead and start building a market as well. Even though it's not been boosted, Thorn unfortunately will not be able to build two farms at any point in time, so we might as well rush this and try and improve our economy a bit, because as we recruit more units, as we bolster our armies, this uh, tight margin is going to get tighter and tighter. So let's get a market going over here, and uh, back at Spore Pit actually, we're going to take advantage of our new uh, tome pretty much right away with the special province improvement of Bountiful Fields. Now, as you can see, this counts as a farm. It gives plus 10 food income. And then per adjacent farm, it gives additional food and draft income. So we have a beautiful spot right down over here to replace this forester with the Bountiful Fields using the farm up here and here to boost the uh, productivity. And then in a couple of turns or in a handful of turns when Spore Pit grows again, we'll be able to establish a farm down here and uh, that'll further boost the Bountiful Fields, making them even more bountiful. So let's get that party started. It'll just take a few turns to get this built and then Spore Pit will be able to grow that much more quickly, making us expand that much more quickly, moving us towards our expansion victory that much more quickly as well. Eventually we'll want to probably secure another Forester, just in case it helps us boost some of the other buildings. So I'm sure we'll have the opportunity to get that done somewhere, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Meanwhile, Baba, I'm pretty sure you're good, so let's get your turn done with. And it seems as though we've acquired Haste Berries. I thought we already had those. Haste Berries do what? Founding, migrating, and absorbing cities takes fewer turns. I could have sworn we already had this, but with these three on hand, we now also have Imperial Essence, which improves our Imperium income. Good stuff, good stuff. What else we got going on over here? Spells ready to launch. I'm going to hold off on launching any of these until our uh, mana situation looks a little bit better. Perhaps I should build some uh, shrines or something, but we do need more mana reserved for uh, spell casting in battles as well. So just going to hold off on casting anything to keep our upkeep manageable, I suppose. And then we have... Uh, Oh, hello. Acreon the Endless has withdrawn to the Astral Void. What? So something happened up over here, right? Acreon is at war, if memory serves me correctly, with Hot Toady. Yes. And uh, looks like he's been eliminated. Well, not eliminated. He's been removed from this realm. Now, if his throne city gets destroyed, then he'll be completely eliminated. And I really hope that doesn't happen because I want to do that. I want to get rid of this guy. We have a bit of a war justification here. 
I, I just don't know where the throne city actually is. I have my suspicions that they're situated somewhere in this general direction. That's why we're headed here. But uh, damn, I hope Hot Toady doesn't beat us to the punch here. All right, things are getting spicy, man. Things are getting real spicy. We've received a trade proposal, meanwhile. What is this? Of course. You want your wizard's bond still. No thank you, and goodbye, Carissa. Not interested. Apart from that, negotiations succeeded. Looks like we have Neeson as our vassals now. Good news. Proceed towards bonded vassalage. I'm not going to boost this right now. I'm not in that much of a rush. We'll get there soon enough. And uh, eventually, when they become bonded vassals, we'll use their... Uh, provinces to act as our proxy provinces, right, with regards to the victory condition. So that'll be helpful. And finally, negotiations succeeded. What is this? Hot Toady is denouncing Carissa the Red. Wow. Really coming in hot, Hot Toady. And he's actually kind of scary, if memory serves me correctly. Jeez, military ranking two out of seven. Aren't we only like, yeah, four out of seven? Okay, this is actually kind of scary. Uh, we need to bolster our military capabilities just a little bit, especially because we are sort of seeing territorial claims getting real close over here. So uh, got to boost the economy, got to boost our military strength, and got to make sure we're ready for the inevitable over here. But for the time being, let's go ahead and hit the end turn button and see what the AI gets up to. Acreon is still active, looks like. Hasn't been uh, eliminated just quite yet. That would be such a bummer. After all that effort looking for them to just... Uh, lose the opportunity to eliminate them like that, that would be a bummer. Ooh. Reckless Incinerators, a battle quest for which we have 20 turns. As your mind wanders the wilds, your meditations are disrupted by a sudden scene of destruction. You see the fiery creations of a pyromancer desolating the forest. The very earth seems to weep as they set the area ablaze, threatening all that grows and blooms. Will you interfere before the Infernal Hound and its army burns the entire forest? I think we must. The fire is a danger not just to all that is good and green, but also all that is uh, dark and green, and that's us. So yes, I swear to destroy the fire creatures threatening the forest and ultimately threatening us as well. Where are they situated? Ooh, hello. All the way over here next to another free city, Woundheart. We can't interact with them because we haven't actually come across them, so we'll see what happens when we uh, you know, get a little bit closer. But it seems as though this isn't where... Uh, our buddy Acreon is actually situated. So maybe he's uh, further up this way, or, I mean, maybe further up this way or something. We'll keep looking. We'll keep looking. But let's uh, get back to business over here. Let's move the uh, halberdiers towards this army as quickly as possible. And you know what I should actually be doing? What I should actually be doing is uh, building roads as I move along as well. This is something that I should have invested in sooner. Let's head on over to our Empire Development screen. Let's go ahead and... Uh, get to road building because we have a fair bit of money uh, in reserve which means we should be able to use road building to pay yes three gold per hex but at least we'll be able to move a little bit more quickly um, and literally pave the way for future armies let's go ahead and attach ourselves i guess to this road up over here which will take us towards Woundheart and uh, our objective over here as well and this uh, watchtower as well actually hmm you know what i could do this instead sure let's do that Ah, of course, can't do that. All right, let's go up here instead then. Build the road as we go along, and uh, we'll be able to hopefully connect somewhere up over here. Though I don't see the road built up here. It would be a real bummer if it didn't actually get built. But let's get this army moving up as well, and as we get to their borders, we should meet the hostile Woundheart. Oh, wow, they do not like us. Chiefess Rima Bonesteel of the Free City Woundheart greets you with hostility. We dwarven looters of Woundheart will fight for our freedom and stand against anyone who threatens our free city, even when they are led by a god-king like you. The blood of invaders, thieves, and spies will nourish the fields. It seems as though we're already at war. Let's inspect the insolent Woundheart and see that we are indeed at war. I'm not going to spend money to make peace with these guys. We can't right away. We have to wait five turns, but I have no interest in doing so. They have a slightly fortified capital here. But uh, we should be able to take it on. How many armies could they possibly have, right? How many could they possibly have? Up over here, meanwhile, the God King himself is going to make his way back towards home, exploring the fog of war a little bit in the hopes of finding some marauders or maybe some uh, pickups or something like that. But I highly doubt we're going to get so lucky. So we're just going to make our way down south because uh, I have some plans for that army. Meanwhile, down here, I would very much like to start excavating as well, because there isn't too much to seek out. So why don't we go ahead and... Hmm. Sure, let's move up to here. Let's go ahead and secure the ability to excavate. 
75 Imperium isn't all that bad. We'll basically make it back in a turn. I mean, two turns technically, but close enough, close enough. So let's get that going and let's go ahead and deselect, reselect, excavate here. Thank you very much. We'll we'll make our way up and, and, and take a peek around to, to see exactly what's going on. Maybe connect paths with Slam Pit if we're actually able to do so. And meanwhile, Thorn can annex another province. Let's go ahead and secure our uh, mine and gold vein here. Further bolster our economy, right? And then later on, we can go ahead and seek the uh, additional research nodes and stuff as well. But apart from that, we're not going to cast any spells or anything. Just end the turn there. And again, see if the AI tries anything cheeky. Feeling all right for the time being. Feeling all right. Into day 30 we go. Nothing too wild here. Received a trade proposal. Let's take a look. Oh, hello. Well, this is interesting. Hot Toady would like a wizard's bond. Oh, it's so tempting. It's so tempting. They also have this declaration of friendship with us already. So that's working in our favor. For the time being, though, no, I will simply decline. We got to stay true to our intents, right? Even when it'll be tough for us. My goodness, they're rank one. Military ranking one out of seven. We're still four, I assume, because why wouldn't we be? This is going to be trouble. Nonetheless, we decline and say goodbye. Let them keep trying. We gotta play hard to get, I suppose. Albadir can keep moving towards this army over here. Did you seriously not build a road? You didn't build a road, did you? Ah, no, it looks like it didn't visually come up, but what if I hover? Yeah, it looks like there's a, there's a road here. All right, fair enough. Just wanted to double check. Let's go ahead and continue building this road and connect to this one over here. Probably wanna go up there, actually. Sure. All right, go up to there then instead. Continue building the road. And they won't be able to merge, obviously, but uh, that's fine. Let's move up to this research post over here and uh, pillage it. Very fitting for a barbarian faction, I think. So go ahead and pillage this province improvement. Make a bit of money, sure. It'll take a couple of turns, but that's okay because during those turns, the uh, halberdier here can perhaps catch up, right? And that'll be, uh, that'll be two full stacks over here. That sounds good to me. Our scout, meanwhile, can keep pushing up in this general direction, I suppose. There's a couple spots to excavate. We can go in this direction, too. No, not worth it. Down here, it's the edge of the map, and over here as well, it's kind of towards... Oh, actually, there's quite a bit to go. Ah, you know what? Let's push up this way. Push up this way. Go ahead and excavate this first, and that next time around, and we'll see what uh, pops up. Meanwhile, up over here, let's get... Uh, let's ignore the fog of war. Let's start moving a bit more directly towards my uh, target over here, towards where that violence is going to take place. And you might be able to figure out exactly what I'm planning on doing over here. Um... But I won't uh, be so explicit about it just quite yet. Meanwhile, a new rally of the lieges has started. If we wanted, we could actually acquire, what, three, four units, actually, including a Pathfinder. Our uh, recruitment points determine just how many we can uh, pick up. And, of course, we have to worry about the gold cost as well. But with this this uh, rally of the lieges, we do have access to some new units as well. We've got the Plague Serpent, the Storm Scale Serpent. Uh, we've got the Halberdier and Steel Shaper from Neeson. Oh, good stuff. And a bunch of stuff from Fangvale as well. We'll hang tight. We're not in a rush there. But uh, let's go ahead and end our turn. Keep the ball rolling here. Man, Hot Toady makes me very nervous. I need to recruit more units. I mean, our economy's looking okay. Maybe I should just start rushing some more units out. We've got some coming. I mean, some have already arrived just now. So there's that. And you know what? Let's make sure... It looks like we have roads all the way up to here. So we should be fine. Yeah, we should be fine. Let's go ahead and pull you up to here then. And we'll eventually connect uh, that road to, to, to Thorn as well. Well, meanwhile, over here, is that the fastest route? Should we not build a road directly towards that desecrated temple? I think we should. Let's go ahead and do exactly that. Again, it takes so little money. We're fine. Get you up there. Meanwhile, Thorn, let's get you recruiting what? Uh, perhaps chase after... Hmm... Another Plague Serpent? Sure. I think that's a worthwhile unit to have uh, on hand. Let's get that started. And separately over here at Spore Pit, let's go ahead and recruit yet another Wild Speaker. No, let's get a Berserker over here. Sure. Get that heavy charge. Not going to spend money on hurrying recruitment just quite yet, but uh, soon enough, I think. But Spore Pit is actually able to build as well. And I just wonder what we should pursue here. Perhaps another market. Generate some more gold. Never a bad idea. Yeah, sure. You know what? Let's go for it. Build a market there. Eventually, we'll get to the mint as well. It has been boosted with the three farms on hand, thanks to our uh, bountiful fields as well. But we'll we'll queue that up later. 
Meanwhile, down over here, the Halberdier can keep moving as quickly as possible. Use those roads as best as possible. And up over here, let's go. All the way down to there. Our scout down here, meanwhile, can uh, keep creeping up, I suppose. Yeah, no reason not to. So let's go ahead and position you up over here. And, ooh, hello. Some uh, dangerous terrain over here. Wait. Flames on this province. Acreon the Endless. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. No way. No way. Acreon's right here. Wait a minute. Are you for real right now? So Acreon is in this general direction, but he's down here instead of up here. That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. So this underground passage would take us to his realm. Oh my goodness. Because of course, that's how he managed to sneak down here because he had this underground access point. Oh, okay. Okay. So now the question becomes, do we want to push after Wundheart or do we declare war on Acreon when we have this justification? And the upper hand, as far as our military strength is concerned. You know what? I think that would be wise. Otherwise, Hot Toady's gonna hunt him down and finish him off. Seems as though he's back from the uh, the void. So I will have to fight him. But he just lost one of his armies. What are the chances he's got another one up and running right away? Oh, that's such a bummer, though. It means we have to backtrack a little bit. But you know what? Let's go for it. Let's go ahead and pull uh, Baba back over here. Sure. And... Uh, once we're done pillaging this research post next turn, we'll bring this supplementary army back as well. And you know what? The Halberdiers will be able to join in. Cool. All right. That sounds good. Sure. The uh, the, 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 the dwarfs of uh, Woundheart will live to die another day. Though we only have 18 turns to take care of this objective. Let's not forget. Down over here then. Hang on. Can we find a way up to there? Um, well, I guess we got to go through this. Now, the, the reason why I said oh no to begin with is because this means there's probably an infestation here. So we got to be careful about that. Is there another way up there? There doesn't seem to be, so let's chance it, I suppose. We might lose this scout, which makes me a little worried, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Meanwhile, we have, yes, Ruler Acreon the Endless returning. Fair enough. And new Empire Development skill available as well. Down over here, cities may expand to provinces located even further from the center. We don't need that just quite yet, but eventually. And down over here, your units and cities gain plus three sensing range. Hmm. I mean, that's not too bad to have on hand. It's 100 Imperium. Let's hang tight. Just for a couple of turns. I'm not in a rush. I now know where I need to go, so we'll we'll hold off on that. You're good, thank you. And I just lost all those because apparently I double right-clicked, though I don't think I did. It's okay. It can't be that important if it's so easy to dismiss, right? Ooh, hello. Things are getting hot. Things are getting real hot. You guys are all good. End the turn there. And we should have access to Nymphs in just a moment's time in just a moment's time. And I'm wondering now if I want to... Uh... Alright, I think I know what I need to do here. I think I know what I need to do here. Let's go ahead and pull you up to here. Let's get you... Oh my goodness, come on. Uh... Sure, let's get you up to here. Let's get this army onto this underground passage. If I enter right now, I believe we'll be trespassing. I didn't mean to actually engage with you, sorry. Uh, if we enter right now, I believe we'll be trespassing, right? Because this is in their realm, which would kick off a war right away. I suppose I'm not too afraid to do that, but I want to make sure I do it when both of my armies can enter the realm at the same time. So let's hold off on the uh, declaration of war for the time being, at least. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these units over here that can keep moving. Oh, we have the road up over here. Do I need to build another one? Tempting. Sure. Let's uh, Let's go for it. Let's get a road built like so, just to connect these through the middle, and let's move you up this way, because it's not like these guys are going to see action right away. Uh, they're reserve units to replace the losses we're about to take as we push into the uh, desecrated temple over here, because I promise you, the Silver Tier Ancient Wonder is going to uh, cause a lot of damage. We might not even clear it when we dive in, and uh, that's okay, because the damage is persistent, so we'll have some time to, uh, to chip away at it. But... Uh, just want to make sure we've done everything else first. Thorn over here has prepared its market. Let's chase after the mint. No, we need two, three farms. That's never going to be an option. So I guess we just invest in it. Or, you know what? Let's go ahead and invest in the shrine first. Start generating some more mana so we're able to stockpile a bit more and cast more magic. And separately, is Spore Pit ready? No, in one turn it will be. Sure, fair enough. We'll hang tight for that. 
Negotiations succeeded, bonded vassalage from Nissan. Good news, proceed. Hopefully, they'll actually send troops into the underground to assist us in our war as well, because they're right there. So, you know, it's in their best interest. Meanwhile, Summon Nymph has been researched. So let's go ahead and pick a new bit of research here. Animal kinship is kind of tempting. I feel like it's uh, most fitting because of our recent decisions. We've recruited a lot of animals and stuff like that. This uh, makes the target race more bestial and connected to animals. When adjacent to a friendly animal or cavalry unit, they are granted plus 10% damage and plus 10 crit chance. Uh, this is a transformation. Now, we should be able to transform our race to take on animal kinship, which is kind of, you know, a quite literal form of evolution for us, um, changing us, uh, showing our adaptability, I suppose. Or we could turn somebody else into having animal kinship. There are some prerequisites, obviously, but I think we can we can hit that. Alternatively, we chase after Primal Mark here. Quite a few of our units will have uh, benefits now from this. Um, geez, it's tempting, isn't it? All right, you know what? Let's uh, let's go with Primal Mark for the time being. Animal kinship can still wait. I feel like as we dive into this war down over here, we'll need uh, we'll need all the help we can get, and Primal Mark might just uh, make the difference. Uh, back to our scout. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. See. With a red banner, it means they're aggressive, so this might actually chase after me. Let's pull back towards this underground passage, because we might need to get out of here. So let's pull on back, uh, make our way out, and uh, hopefully survive. I would I would like to keep my scout alive. Baba, you're good. Yep, stay put. Waste some movement, but that's okay. And meanwhile, up over here, ready to dive into the desecrated temple, I suppose. I'm fairly confident we're going to lose this battle. I, I, actually, I'm fairly confident we're going to have to retreat from it. That is an option with uh, Wonders, so uh, that's probably how we're going to have to play this out. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and explore and, and clear this desecrated temple out and hope for the best here. Ooh, right, of course. So this is now a claimed structure because Hot Toady here established a city nearby. Well, whether it was a city or an outpost would have been, you know, wouldn't have made a difference. He, he's got presence in the area, which means this now falls into a territory that he technically has claims over. So this will give them a grievance against us, which, uh, you know what? I guess I don't care. It brings us closer to war, but so be it. We were here first, and uh, I intend to claim this for ourselves. Yes, I am absolutely certain I want to enter this structure. Let's go. Ooh, risky battle. All right. I just noticed that because we were hovering on this. But what do we have here? Scrolls of Terror. You and your retinue approach a grand desecrated temple decorated with depictions of stern-looking Godir. You hear eerie chanting coming from within and espy a group of hooded figures performing some sort of ritual. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream echoes through the temple. This group is summoning something. Something big and otherworldly. Your companions swallow nervously as they look on, awaiting orders. You wonder if you should allow the summoning ritual to continue or stop it before it's too late. So we can stop this ritual now, go to arms, it's a risky battle, Ugh, that looked kind of rough, and uh, in the upcoming battle, demonic summoning is active, which means in five turns, a Baylor will be summoned on the defender's side. We most certainly do not want to see that happen. Oh my goodness. Um, alternatively, we can delay the ritual for as long as possible, investing over half of our mana. Jeez, and that will do what? Buy us three more turns before that Baylor gets summoned. Oh man, okay. This is rough. You know what? Okay, it's time to make an executive decision. We are going to dive in, demand that they stop this ritual now. We're not going to waste our mana on this because I'm almost certain we'll have to pull back from this battle. And I'm almost certain that it's barely going to last five turns. It might last five turns. We'll see the Baylor arrive and then, you know, get the hell out of here. Uh, and that's exactly why I recruited all those additional units so that we're, you know, whatever losses we take, we'll be able to quickly replace and then dive back in here. And hopefully if that Baylor is summoned in this battle, it won't stick around and be persistent like the damage that we deal is persistent. Oh boy. I'm not 100% sure how that would play out, actually, and uh, I guess there's only one way to find out. Stop this ritual now. To arms. This is gonna be rough. Oh, this is gonna be very rough. We're up against a Tyrant Knight. We're up against a Chaos Eater. They've got uh, some Night Guard. They've got some 
battle mage units. They're warlocks over here with a sundering curse. Look at the damage output on that. Corpse eating as well. Did I see corpse eating elsewhere? I did indeed. Okay, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be rough. And they got a pair of pursuers as well. Holy crap! Holy crap! All right. Well, let's see what we can do. To the battlefield we go. So this is definitely going to be a case of us causing some damage and pulling away. We are easily able to retreat because uh, the retreat points are right behind us. It will complicate things a bit on the campaign map, but I'm willing to take that on. But remember, I am also willing to take on some losses as long as we don't lose Gurgle himself. So we just got to be careful on that front. But uh, I do want to show you guys the absolutely gorgeous model of the Chaos Eater. It is probably one of my favorite monster designs in... Uh, in the game? I don't know, that's hard to say. The, the, the creature design in Age of Wonders 4 is absolutely phenomenal. Like, kudos to the uh, design team, to the artists, both concept artists and modelers and texture artists and everything, to everyone involved, because some of the creature design is absolutely amazing. All of it's actually amazing, truth be told. And just look at this thing. I love it, the VFX and stuff as well, the lighting on it, it's such a cool beast. Unfortunately, it's on the other side of the battlefield here, but... Uh, I guess I could still admire it. Uh, separately, though, the uh, Tyrant Knight is also quite scary in terms of its uh, capabilities. I mean, it looks good as well, but, uh, but, 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 but the Chaos Eater is something quite special. Anyway, let's stop admiring the enemy and prepare to defeat it instead. Let's get our warriors moving up to create a bit of a shield wall. Try and get a little close to the enemy, but not too much, right? I don't want to overcommit. I want to stay close enough so that we can retreat quickly when need be. All right, let's do this. Let's pull you up to... Uh, huh. Here? Right? And let's pull you up to here so they can't get flanked from that side. That should work out nicely. And I think that's about as close as I would like to get. You, my good friend, can push up to... Well, let's try this. Let's push the Sunderers up to here to kind of block access so Gurgle is uh, relatively safe. Yep, push you up to there. Have you facing that way. We want to make sure we don't get flanked or charged by the uh, Tyrant Knight because that can be extremely, extremely devastating. So just got to keep an eye out for that. Meanwhile, Gurgle, let's sure get you up to here. Stay behind that front line. Let's get our War Shaman up to here as well. Both Gurgle and the War Shaman have various ways in which they can provide some temporary hit points and regeneration as well. So we'll try and uh, take advantage of that. And let's not forget, this also gives us Strengthened, which is a slight increase to damage output. Three turn cooldown though, so that's no, uh, it's not a short amount of time. Get this Floral Stinger up over here as well. This guy needs to go in a melee. I mean, he's got the uh, Poisonous Spores, but that's a two turn cooldown. And do we really want to sit there when we have this melee strike available? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll make the decision uh, when these guys start applying some pressure. Let's end the turn there, see what the AI gets up to as we enter defense mode across the board over here and hope for the best. Jeez. All right. Covering a lot of ground on their side. They do have some ranged capabilities, so that's going to suck for us. And they haven't got close enough for us to do anything from here, eh? I'm not going to take the bait. I'm not going to take the bait. Tempting as it is, we're going to stay back over here. You know what I could do is, yes, maybe... Uh, of course. If I could just throw my javelins and sunder their, uh, their defenses a little bit, it would have possibly gone a long way, but I have to risk moving just a little out of formation, and I... I'm, gonna tr I'm trying to resist that. You know what? Stay put. Stay put. You can maybe... You can maybe come up this way a little bit. Or we'll wait for them to charge in, and then maybe we'll be able to come in from the side there ourselves. Sure. Well, let's leave it at that. End the turn there. I'm trying to not use magic so that when we come back in, we're you know not in a pitiful state, but I, I might actually need to use some magic over here. We could use the Vine Prison as they come closer. It would distract them. Right, and uh, we could potentially immobilize some of our enemies as well, which is better done sooner rather than later. God damn! All right, you know what? Here, let's go for the vine prison. Let's. Uh, I don't want to distract them too far away because then I'll have to move up to actually hit them as well. All right, let's hold off on the vine prison. Might be the wrong call here, but it's the call I'm making. End the turn there. Let them come closer. Enter defense mode. Here we go. This is gonna hurt. All right. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. In comes their range units. Again, we have our defenses up, so we should be okay. That weakened isn't good for us, unfortunately. And some more shots over here. Weakening these guys too. No, resisted. Good stuff. In come the knights, though. That's going to hurt a lot. 
Oh, wow. Really? That's all it did? Holy crap, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. The fact that we're barely taking any damage there. Those stacked defense-like modes, that they make such a big difference. All right, okay. Might we actually stand a chance here? Or am I getting kind of cocky? I might be getting kind of cocky, but now I'm wondering if I should pop uh, Visions of Victory instead. This gives us three fortune, making it more likely for us to land critical hits, and that's absolutely huge. No, you know what? Let's stick to the uh, the vines first. I went from saying I'm not going to use any magic to now being like, let's use all the magic. Let's use the vine prison first. Try and get these guys, you know, immobilized, stuck in place, whatever we can do, distracted, whatever it might be. So let's go ahead and pop this down over here. Hope for the best. See what these guys get up to. Uh, they'll, of course, be moving automatically and stuff. And meanwhile, over here, should I move into flank? Should I move into flank? Get out of position, expose our back line over here. This Chaos Eater is probably coming around the bend, but it might get distracted by the vines. All right. All right. If I try to sunder your armor, barely does any damage, but it reduces your defenses. What does that look like? Oh, boy. They actually have a decent bit of defense. They actually have a decent bit of defense. You know what? No. Let's charge him. Flank him. Let's get some work done over here. Got that Primal Strike in there. Get two hits, and then these guys will be able to get three hits in and do a lot of hurt. Yeah, go for it. Gonna eat the uh, Retaliation first, but then here come our Strikes. If we get a crit here, it'll be absolutely massive. No such luck. That's okay. From back over here, we could pop this. Magic Blast won't do enough. This won't do enough either, really. What about uh, our blast back over here? Still not enough. Okay, that's fine. Poisonous spores. Ooh, that's a fair bit of damage. Not enough to finish them off. No point getting poisoned on you. 43% up there. Oh, holy crap. That's a lot of damage and 90% chance of getting them poisoned. All right, fair enough. Let's go ahead and hit you with that then. Just try and get some work done in the back lines as well. And meanwhile, up front over here, we'll have to do a combination of things. So... You can go in with the strikes over here. They're not going to retaliate now. Yeah, beautiful stuff. And uh, let's pop what? Your magic blast or your poison blast? Finish you off. 29% of poison. 43% chance of poison. All right, fine. So let's go ahead and pop this shot down over here. Finish you off with that. Beauty. And buddy, you go ahead. 50% chance to hit. It's not amazing. I guess I could creep up to here for the 90% chance. Ah, oh, fine. Fine, I'll take it. I'll take it. And uh, let's pop this shot over here. 43% chance of getting them poisoned. Worth a shot. What else are we doing? Damn it. Resisted. That's fine. End our turn there. I do believe everyone's done their attacks. No one's going to enter into defense mode, so we're going to take a lot more damage this time around. But, uh, hey, we've dealt a fair bit, too. We've already eliminated an enemy unit. Resisted the entangle, unfortunately. Creeping up, gonna get shots in. But they've exposed themselves, too, so there's that. You over here? They've resisted it as well, god damn. But, again, they've exposed themselves, and we might be able to eliminate them. I don't want to lose this unit. That was, uh... Ooh, hello. Ah, damn it. I was really hoping we'd get lucky there, but look at the damage output on that thing. Alright, the tide's already turned. I got a little cocky there, the tide's already turned, we need to pull back. Oh, nice, they missed. These guys are trying to move around, get a charge in. It's going to cause a fair bit of damage. But you know what? That wasn't so bad. <laughs> I, I, keep, I keep going, no, this is terrible. Actually, we might pull this off. No, this is terrible. Actually, we might pull this off. Oh, it's so hard to say no to the opportunities. Now, we're not going to do a lot of damage here, unfortunately. Getting rid of one more unit would go quite a long way. If I pop Vision of Victory down here... We hit quite a few of them. We could try a bit of regeneration, and maybe with the uh, the help of uh, of a crit or two, we could go a long way. Maybe. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and cast this. Good stuff. That's not a lot of damage output, unfortunately. Not a lot of damage output at all. You're going to get the flank in there. Can we... If we hit you with this... A little bit of damage, 43% chance of poisoning it. Not that great. I think I would much rather use Invigorate on you in the central position over here. Some of that healing is being wasted, but most of it's being used quite nicely. We're foregoing Buddy back there. I think that's all right. Go ahead and pop that over there. 
We should get the strengthening as well out of that, and that should just give us a bit of an edge over here. Yeah, sure, let's, uh, let's try for it. Attack away. These guys will eat the retaliation, I suppose. That's fine. They have two retaliatory attacks, actually, I think. Or just the one? Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's go ahead and strike from down over here. Good stuff. Come on, give me a crit. Just want the one crit. Go ahead and hit these guys from the flank. Let's go. All right. A little bit more. God damn it. Okay. It's really hoping for the best. Uh, we could rush up over here and, again, try and eliminate another unit. We could come up this way instead, just so we're closer to the uh, retreat. <laughs> In two turns, a Baylor arrives. Right, we don't stand a chance here. We got to be ready to pull back. So let's uh, nudge you up to here. Get the attack in up over here. Let's go. And what I should probably do is uh, hit Buddy here with a Magic Blast, because these guys will try and retreat, and maybe as we get our attack of opportunity, we'll finish them off. Or they'll just survive. And then they'll, they'll, they'll be out of reach. Meanwhile, if we hit with the Magic Blast, 90% chance to do so, we actually eliminate them. Yeah, go for it. Good stuff. Got the hit there. Anybody else uh, able to move or do anything? No, I believe that's everyone's turn done. Uh, the vines all move automatically. Let's see what they get up to this turn. And uh, again, hope for the best. Regeneration is helping us a little bit, but that's not going to make that much of a difference. That hurt quite a bit, actually. Resisting the entanglement. No surprise there, truth be told. Ooh. Ooh, that hurt a lot. That hurt a fair bit as well, and it's going to hurt quite a bit more. But he's got to get out of there. In comes another charge, I think. Yeah. But we're looking okay. All right, you know what? I think it's time to pull you back. As far back as we can go. Because we can't cause damage damage. We've eliminated two units. That's that's pretty good. So let's get you uh, let's get you back to here. I don't think I can uh, fire from back there. We can't reach anything. Uh, you are able to escape right away if need be. All right, good to know. Down over here, do we want to try and eliminate Buddy here? That retaliation will basically wipe this unit out. We have 345 mana left. I could try and use healing roots to bring some of these guys back. It's not a lot. I'd basically be sacrificing them, keeping them here as bait. Lose the only unit of Sunderers we have in this army. You know what? Let's go for it. Let's see how long they can live. We get an entity back, do a little bit more damage. We'll take this retaliatory strike. That'll be very hurtful. Let's start with the flanking over here. Maybe we can eliminate an entity and reduce the damage output. So, uh, yeah, sure. God, I really should be pulling back. One more turn. Let's go. Got the crit there, I think. Yeah. Even with the crits, we didn't do a lot of damage. That was two crits. Was that three crits? And Buddy's still standing? God damn, man. God damn. All right. Um, I could start with some ranged attacks first. If I pull you back, how far back can we go? Up to here for a 50% chance. Up to here is 30%. All right, fine. Oh, God. Seems, seems silly. If we go for the restoration instead, we can hit anybody. Keep these guys a little bit more alive for a little bit longer, maybe. Hmm. It's between, it's between damage and defense. Between damage and defense. I think the two of them together will probably eliminate these guys. All right, so you know what? Let's pull you back to here. Let's go ahead and pop the uh, restore on you, just to try and keep you alive. And again, use them as bait, basically. Down over here, let's... Uh, We'll Poison Blast from back over here, I guess. Yeah, go for it. 50% chance to hit, but I'll take my chances, literally. Come on, baby, please. Oh, wow, got a crit. Are you kidding me? I was not expecting that. I can't believe it. We're about to eliminate the uh, the Night Guard here, the Tyrant Knight. Um, who does it, though? Who gets the kill? Should it be these uh, Warriors or these Sunderers? Oh, you know what? Hmm. No, we shouldn't chase after this thing. Can we actually retreat with everybody alive? That would be crazy. That'd be wild. All right, let's go for this. Got the crit there. Oh, come on. All the crits are coming through now. 
The game's just trying to bait me here. These guys are losing morale too now. Oh, come on, man. Oh, come on. Don't do me like this. It's so tempting to stay and fight. Yeah, get in there. Let's go. Let's go. At least these guys. At least these guys. Right? The rest will fall back. Because, again, don't forget, we have a Baylor coming. This thing is nothing to scoff at. 150 HP. Look at all that damage output. Right? So, we got to leave. But, hey, we got some work done. End the turn there. See what the AI gets up to. That regen is helping us as well. And there's the Baylor. Damn it. Managed to resist the entanglement. Oh, we're screwed. We're in so much trouble. Wow. It's time to leave. It's time to leave. And now this thing's gonna get, oh crap, absolutely obliterated. An attack of opportunity will absolutely eliminate these guys. Can I do something to protect them from it? Um, hmm. Everything back here is going to pull back. I mean, these guys could try and, and, and get some damage done. Oh, look at that. We can actually do a fair bit of damage on this Chaos Eater, but they'll get focused down and crushed. They'll get focused down and crushed right afterwards. What can I cast? Anything? Nothing. All right, time to pull out. It's time to pull out. These guys can only get so far back. Gurgle has to go. If Gurgle dies, we're in a lot of trouble. It just slows everything down, so we got to get uh, we got to get Buddy out. Pop poison over there. Pop poison over here. Eh, not worth it. What about the spores? Ooh, bit of damage up there. Then we'll probably lose you. Probably lose you. All right, get out of here. Yeah, get out of here. Retreat. So if we lose the battle, the unit will either die or scatter and reappear at one of your cities after a few turns. Fingers crossed. We hope for the best. Any losses we take, of course, we've recruited replenishments for exactly that purpose, right? So let's get out of here. Mainly trying to keep Gurgle alive. This is going to hurt our uh, morale as well, unfortunately. So you know what? I should actually start with this attack just so that we get any crits possibly. We shouldn't have done that uh, retreat just quite yet because I've hurt my chances of getting any crits over here. So paying the price for that. It's okay though. That actually worked out all right. These guys we're going to sacrifice. I think we have to. You, we can pull back. Let's go as far back as you can go. Gurgle, let's, uh, let's get you out of here. Let's go. And these guys, I wonder, I wonder. Poison Blast up there. It only does nine damage. It's not that much. It's up to the Sunderers and, uh, and these warriors over here, I suppose. I'm going to keep these guys alive so they distract the enemy. Let's pull these guys out. Yep. And, uh, next turn we beat the full retreat, but maybe, maybe we kill the Chaos Eater? I highly doubt it. End the turn, though. Defense mode for who? Oh, you? Um, yeah, I mean, I suppose so, sure. I could try and shield bash you, 28% chance of stunning. Yeah, not worth it. The retaliation alone will kill us. So, uh, yeah, let's enter defense mode over here and uh, see what comes our way. The regen over here is helping a little bit. Are they going to survive this onslaught? I don't think so, because they're going to get shot at as well, I'm sure. Got a retaliatory attack over here, and this thing's going to crush us. No, it's going to chase. Oh, those poor warriors. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Well, hey, they put up a good fight. Good retaliation there. Did we just get stunned now of all times? We did, didn't we? We just got stunned. It's tempting to try and heal them to hit back, but... It's only 10 HP. You know what? Let's go for it. It doesn't cost us that much. Let's go for it. Let's try. One more turn. They're going to hit us. We get our regen as well. That was quite a huge stack of it, actually. Ooh, that hurt a lot. I'm glad we regen, I suppose. But we're berserk now, which could work to our advantage if we survive, which we won't. <laughs> oh, man. All right. You know what? We did all right. I'm going to be real with you. We actually kind of did all right there. We lost a couple units, we eliminated three, and did a decent bit of damage. I don't recall if the damage carries over, but we'll find out soon enough. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that went pretty well, <laughs> all things considered. Now, they've been scattered, um, so they won't return for a few turns. Hopefully, they'll end up at Thorn as opposed to at Spore Pit. Unfortunately, Gurgle 
does count as in the void, which does put a dampener on things because it'll reduce our stability by, I believe, negative 20 across the board. It'll stop our research. It has a few negative effects. We can't use magic anywhere until Gurgle actually returns. So this will slow us down a little bit, but it, it isn't the end of the world. It isn't the end of the world. Let's go ahead and move you into the Desecrated Temple just to occupy the space and wait for reinforcements to arrive. But that's this turn done. And uh, now we just hang tight and hope that nothing wild happens up there, that Hot Toady doesn't sense our weakness and decide to dive in or something, because that would be really bad for us. That would be really bad for us. Over here, you can join this army. Let's go. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Stay put now. Let's actually go ahead and hit that. Over here, uh, let's get you to join up over here. And again, until, until Gurgle comes back, I think we should avoid the declaration of this war. Um, you guys are good. Baba, you're good as well. This will prevent Acreon's armies from coming up because we've plugged the underground passage. So even if they're trying to come up, they won't be able to. And meanwhile, down over here, it looks like this thing is chasing after us. So we're going to uh, do what? We're going to pull over this way. And maybe we'll try and excavate in this direction to get away from this thing, or maybe it'll stop chasing us. Spore Pit, meanwhile, has built its market, which means we can now build the mint here, furthering our gold economy. Let's instead chase after the shrine. It'll take one turn, and it'll just boost our mana income. You can see just how helpful magic is on the battlefield, right? I mean, that much is a given, but it is uh, a very clear example of... Uh, very clear example of it, right? We can't even cast any of these spells while our ruler's in the void, of course. All right, that's fine. We're okay. We're okay. We got this. I really hope the enemy army doesn't have that Baylor pre-summoned. Now what's this? Toxic Stew. After a diplomatic dinner with your envoys, you are contacted by a pale guildmistress, Gerica Rodblock of Neeson. I know I am just a lesser guildmistress in the eyes of a god-king, she says anxiously, but I need to learn the truth. After trying the stew you growth are famous for, my food taster bloated with gas until the poor man was ripped apart from within, turning the buffet into a nauseating mess. Now, I keep thinking, was this man's death supposed to be my own? Do you seek my demise, Gurgle? I don't think I do. No, we just seek their subjugation, which has already kind of happened. This was a tragic accident. Let my treasury vouch for our friendship, I can say getting us a step closer to flourishing vassalage. I could say if I wanted you dead, you would be. We'd lose a bit of allegiance. We wouldn't lose our current state of bonded vassalage. It would make us a bit more evil. I think this is the fitting response. Or I can just say it's not my fault you hulking artisans can't stomach our delicacies. Hmm. Either of these options are fitting for us. I'm, to be perfectly honest, not sure which one is more or less in character. They both feel right because we are evil and if we did want to kill something as opposed to subjugate it, we absolutely would. Though, in my mind, this stew is just our people's food. I'm gonna go with this one because it comes with... Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna go with this one. If I wanted you dead, you would be. Let's lean into our evilness as well a little bit, right? Sure. Take the punishment there. This is... Uh, Gurs. Oh, this is an interesting mishmash of troops. So this is our newly recruited... Oh, okay, okay, I see what's happened here. We've got our Plague Serpent, and then we have our Floral Stinger and our War Shaman that survived that battle after retreating. This is our newly recruited Berserker, but where are the other units that retreated? Do we, did we actually lose them? Dang, we might have actually lost them. That's a shame. Uh, let's move this Berserker up towards the Desecrated Temple as quickly as possible. And these guys will replenish a little bit and move up towards the Desecrated Temple as well. It'll only take them one turn. Fair enough. Over here, we're hanging tight. You boys are hanging tight as well. Down over here, this thing is getting closer and closer. Um, do I want to keep digging or do I want to leave? You know what? Why not both? Get you to this underground passage. Do not enter. Do not build an outpost. Simply dig. Cool. Hopefully that thing won't catch us and kill us. Hopefully it'll come close and we'll be able to decide what we want to do. Up over here, stay put. Thorn, meanwhile, having produced the shrine, let's chase after not the mana obelisk, but perhaps the mint, finally. Sure, again, we'll never get farms at Thorn, so let's just accept that we won't be able to boost that. Uh, Sporpit's Berserker is done, Sporpit's shrine is also done. So, 
let's go chasing after not the bathhouse again this negative penalty is just because um our ruler is in the void let's chase after perhaps the mana obelisk shall we plus 15 mana income we we, we, we use a lot of magic yeah, sure, go for it. And then we can consider some of our other options over here as well. Fair enough. One more turn until Gurgle returns. Where are you headed? Engaging with our enemies, perhaps? I'm glad they're not coming out to uh, attack us. That's at least uh, a positive. Let's see what uh, goes down here. Things seem relatively calm. Gurgle will unfortunately arrive at Spore Pit. It's quite far away, but that is our throne city, so that is to be expected. Yep, there he is. Good old Gurgle. Gonna get as far as we can get, as quickly as we can get there. Um, up to here, sure. Join these guys. It'll take them, what, one turn to get up to here? And then we can perhaps enter. That's a stack of four. Uh, let's go ahead and send... That War Shaman, with its Invigorate, was very helpful. The Plague Serpent is pretty good as well. It'd be a bit of an outlier here. Let's send, uh, let's send the War Shaman up. Keep you in friendly territory so you keep healing. Let's get you up to there. Stay put. We'll have three, four, five, and room for a nymph if we want. Let's go ahead and uh, it'll take three turns to actually prep this spell. Let's get to work there. Maybe we'll get an entwined thrall or something else instead. Now here we can apply poison blades as well. That would be quite helpful, I think, but uh, we don't have to cast it just quite yet. Now hang on to a lower upkeep for as long as possible, I suppose. You guys hang tight there. Really hope having two of these is the right call. Conjure animal should be helpful. Should be. Baba, I guess we're good to go. Dang. I guess we're good to go. Go ahead and enter. And trespass. So it's not an immediate war declaration, but it does count as a grievance. Now hang on. Hang on. Eight. Would still allow us to have our minor um, justification not going to shift things too heavily against us or anything. So, you know what? Sure. Let's go ahead and uh, enter their realm first, scout it out, and then declare our war, right? That seems fitting uh, for our approach. Again, little tendrils going ahead of us. Trespass away. Let's send this army in as well. And you know what? I actually have to move our first army first. And wow, the Nebular Sanctum, their capital is right there. Just dive into it. It's got some fortification. It's not that wild. Not that wild. Uh, let's go ahead and take a step out. Just to, to, just to see what kind of units they have and, and all that good stuff. Back up to this layer. Did these guys come through? I guess they did. Yep, there they are. Alright, so let's just take a little bit of a peek. How far can you go? Quite far, actually. Let's move up this way. It looks like they just have these three stacks. You've got what here? Soother. Cosmic Blast, decent damage output, and Soothing Breeze, target friendly unit, and another within two hexes heals 20 temporary hit points, they got two of those, they've got the Arcane Guard over here, decent melee strike there, and they've got the Battle Mage units with the Cosmic Bolts, kind of scary, that's just the one stack, this stack over here, it's got the Spell Breaker, Tuned Cast, adds 10 combat casting points, goddamn, it's not ideal. They've got the Soother here, a pair of Arcane Guards, and a Mystic Projection. Okay. And then this army is just two units, Spell Shield and Arcane Guard. Where is Acreon himself? A little out of position, perhaps? Maybe uh, gone exploring, looking for another underground passage to come out from? But that means there's another stack out there. That means there's another stack out there. Uh, we can't get... If we engage these guys in a siege, it would pull them all in. I could engage these guys separately. So that could work out. And up top, over here... You, my good friend, are going to wait one more turn. We have to wait a couple turns for you. Alright, cool. You, over here, still being chased. Can we dig anything out over there? We cannot. It doesn't look like it. So, let's leave. This thing is still chasing us, so let's get the hell out of here. We'll, uh, we'll find another spot to enter in from. Or maybe we'll go back down there next turn or something just to see where the uh, Pursuer ends up, right? Meanwhile, over here, Gurgle has returned to Spore Pit. Cool. And Carissa the Red has withdrawn to the Astral Void. Oh, damn. Who are you at war with, Carissa? Oh. 
So that's where Acreon is. Well, hang on. Where did that happen? All the way up over here? So is there an underground passage up there? Is Acreon the one actually dealing that damage? I can hope so, because that means that stack is out of position. But it also means that we can't eliminate him, uh, because if we just take his throne city, he's still alive. We'll have to chase after him afterwards anyway. All right, fair enough. Good to know. Let's get you stationed there. Baba is ready to dive into war, I think. But first, Thorn can annex another province. Let us secure... Sure, our uh, research post over here. The mana node is currently occupied. Hmm. wonder if we can do something about that. Build a research post. Let's pull... Ah. Pull you up to here. I could maybe fight them on the way over. Bit of a distraction. But when else am I going to fall back here, right? So, sure. Let's, uh, let's get you up to here so you're still healing. I want to make sure we're in friendly territory. Yeah. Let's get you up to here so you're still healing. Um, and then next turn we'll dive in with these two. That's four versus two. That should be an easy battle. Uh, you can maybe make your way back as well. Sure. So they can form the stack a bit sooner, maybe. Uh, it doesn't make a big difference. And these guys are fine up over there. All right, cool. Or Pit can annex another province as well. Let's get the farm down over here because it'll assist, assist the Bountiful Fields as well. Uh, we have the option for a farm up there. We have a quarry up here. Some fisheries around the way as well. Uh, let's stick with the farm over here. I think it makes most sense. Sure. These Bountiful Fields should be helping quite a bit more now. And you can see we're growing at a decent pace over here. So this is feeling pretty good. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and build maybe a blacksmith to accelerate the rate at which we are able to recruit units. Our economy is looking okay, both for mana and gold. So I'm thinking, what? Until we hit 15 population, we're not going to do this. We are able to, well, we have to capture some heroes to generate mana here. So sure, let's go with, let's go with the blacksmith. It's been boosted, so that should be good for us. And then we can consider some of our other options. With that out of the way, just trying to figure out... So our economy is looking alright. We've got decent Imperium as well. Are there any upgrades I would like to chase after? we got Forced March here, not in a rush for that. Siege Specialization is right around the corner. Oh, actually, it's not. 15 turns away. Hot damn. Alright. This could be quite helpful when uh, going into wars and stuff like that, but we unfortunately don't actually have access to it yet. Don't have access to much that's worth chasing just quite now. Hmm, your units regenerate more hit points per turn in friendly domains. Actually, that's not a bad thing to have. Oh, we already have it, right. I'm like, why don't I already have it? Well, because we do. Okay, nothing else is unlocked. We're fine here. All right, folks, looks like uh, next turn we take care of these guys, move towards the Desecrated Temple, and also dive into war with uh, Acreon the Endless, bringing an end to Acreon. But all that and more we'll have to wait until next time, folks. I know this episode is just short of an hour, but if we dive into all these battles right now, it might go on for an hour and a half or so. I think this is a good spot to end things on. A bit of a cliffhanger, if you will. We're about to dive into our first war against a faction, while at the same time trying to secure this uh, desecrated temple that we've been eyeing for so long. The question is, is that Baelor still standing? Will it be there when we come back in? Or have we done enough damage such that we can go back in there, delay their ritual, and uh, and have the upper hand? Time will tell. Folks, if you enjoyed this episode, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a very big difference in letting me know that you're enjoying something and that I should keep it going on the channel. And apart from that, as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a massive thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.